I'm going to test our microphone. We have some print media here. Uh, it's difficult for them to hear over the generators and some of the equipment. So we'll be using our microphone. Hopefully that will assist you. We're going to get started in just a moment. A regular sound check for media. Can everyone hear us all right? Sound check? No? For for regular media with microphones, we're good? Okay, everybody in the back, we're good? All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. I want to thank you very much for your patience. As you know, this is an ongoing incident. Uh, there are a lot of changes, a lot of moving parts, so we uh, sincerely, thank you for your patience with the time adjustments. My name is Officer Jonna Watson. I'm one of the public information officers for the Oakland Police Department. We do have uh, media updates uh, that we'd like to provide you with, but first I'd like to start with Sergeant Ray Kelly. He's with the Alameda County Sheriff's Office Coroner's Bureau. Sergeant. So at this point, um the last number that we gave out of deceased folks was 30. Uh, that has since moved up to 33, 33 victims of this fire thus far. We continue to work inside uh, the building. Uh, if you would like a percentage, I, I would say we're 35 to 40% uh, uh, through the building. That work continues. I'm sure fire can probably comment on that more. I'd like to introduce, so we, we have a lot of uh, out of the country media with us and also outside the state of California, I'd like to introduce Mayor Libby Schaff. Uh, at this time, we have delivered the, the unacceptable and horrific news of losing a loved one to seven of our families. We'll be releasing the names of those decedents, with the exception of any juveniles, to you promptly. But, is, but it is with so much grief and so much compassion that we, as your city family, share with you this, this horrific news. And as this tragedy continues to unfold, I want to again reassure you of what our priorities are as the city of Oakland. Our first priority is the humane and compassionate removal of the victim of this tragedy. And I want to assure you that we are continuing to operate a 24 seven recovery operation to effectuate that removal Secondly, we are focusing on supporting the families and the loved ones, some who are coming from very far away. And we are working as fast as we can, and I really want to commend the coroner's office that has put extraordinary resources to speed up our ability to positively identify the victims of this fire. And then our final focus is doing everything that we can to preserve evidence and to conduct the recovery operation in a manner that allows us to fully and professionally investigate this incident so that we can get to the bottom of how this happened. Today, our district attorney, Nancy O'Malley, did activate a criminal investigation. That team is on the site and working in concert with our other law enforcement partners. And then finally, I just want to offer my extreme gratitude to a group of individuals who give the term public servant 
just a whole new meaning. The teamwork that we have seen as these professionals have, un under the hardest of circumstances, have hand by hand, bucket by bucket, removed debris, preserved it, as well as humanely and compassionately addressed the victims that have been found. 33 victims found in this building. The professionalism that they have exhibited under these unbelievable circumstances has been something that it has been an honor to work alongside. And so with that, I am sure you will have plenty of questions and that you will continue to have questions and we will continue to be available and answer them as this horrific tragedy continues to unfold. I'm gonna turn it over to Jonna to manage your questions. Thank you, Mayor. Before we open it up for questions, I would like to call up the captain who was up here earlier. Uh, it's absolutely imperative that we provide information that may affect the investigation uh, in the future. So, Captain, if you could just reiterate for everyone what you shared with the media a couple of hours ago. Thank you. Again, the coroner's office does ask any family members or friends of the victims if you, if you can preserve any DNA um, type uh, of equipment, combs, brushes, and uh, secure them in a brown paper bag. Please hold on to them until you are asked of them from the coroner's bureau. Thank you. If we come across a victim and we cannot identify them, we have to resort to DNA. I'm going to ask for patience on uh, the side of media. We have a lot of media here, not only our local stations, national stations, but international. Uh, we understand you have a lot of questions. We have time to answer those questions. Uh, there are a lot of questions we won't be able to answer, so please be patient with, with us. Uh, those answers will come. It will be a matter of time. They may not be right now. They may not be tomorrow, but those answers will come. That's what everyone uh, in the city of Oakland is, uh, is working to find. So please let's be patient with each other. Allow us to uh, call on you, identify who you are and which agency. We know that we have a lot of uh, national and international media and we are not familiar with you as, uh, as we would like to be. So, so please uh, allow us uh, that moment. I'm gonna start on the left here. Yes, ma'am. I will certainly turn that over to Sergeant Kelly. Um, yes, this tragedy has hit very close to home for, for our agency. One of our deputies that we work with uh, lost his son in this fire. And so um, we're still dealing with that as we continue to deal with the other victims. So this has affected uh, us as first responders, uh, and uh, you know, we're, we're we weren't really prepared to talk about that right now, but but we're dealing with that, and uh, and our, our family, our, our our department is hurting from that, and so yes, that that is true. Do you know how many people were at the party? Do you have a have a rough guess? Hold on, hold on, sorry. Again, all we can say at this time is that we have activated the criminal investigation team. That is a precaution. That means that certain individuals are present on site from the district attorney's office, and they are working in concert with other law enforcement agencies. Okay. No particular specific investigation yet. They're just here. This is a process that gets activated that preserves all these options. Okay, hold, hold on. Hold on one second, please. Hold on. We're going to start from the left and we'll work our way over. We'll make sure everybody gets some questions uh, answered, okay? Um, KCBS, can I ask a question? Okay. Go, go ahead, sir. Right. I want to ask the mayor. One of your city councilmen, he said that he felt this party should never have been allowed to happen. I want to ask you, should this party event on Friday night should have ever been allowed to happen? 
You know, everyone is understandably very emotional because of this incident. And I'm sure that many things are gonna be said, many assumptions, many, many things are gonna be said out of emotions. What our job is, is to focus on our priorities and to also assemble a comprehensive record of what we as a government knew about this property. We are in the process of doing that. We want to assure that it is complete, that it is professional, that it is comprehensive before we draw any conclusions from that public record. Go ahead. Go ahead. Can, can you can you ask your question again? How are the seven able to be identified? It's for you, Sergeant. Uh, the the identifications took uh, place through fingerprints, and then we also had uh, identifications that got us uh, uh, close. And then the uh, the a lot of folks we're finding have IDs on them whether they have wallets or purses or knapsacks. And so we're finding identifications in there that helps. We, we have to verify those identifications with fingerprints. And so that's how we're able to get the seven identities at this time. Go ahead, ma'am. They're not all in one area. And we, we thought that maybe going into this that it, they would all be in one area, but we are finding people throughout the entire square footage of that structure. We've broken the warehouse into four quadrants. We, fi we found victims in every quadrant of the warehouse. So if you, if you take the, the, the warehouse from above and you look at it as a box, we've broken that box into four pieces and each team is working each section. And so we have found victims in every section. Well, they're, 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 they are and they're not. They're, they're, there's no, there's, there's, there's no answer to that question. There, it's, it's so, it's so random. They're, they're, we're finding victims um, where we least expect them. Go ahead, Hazi. Hazi, speak up a little bit louder. Chief, Chief, how fast did you get to the scene? Please Thank introduce you. yourself. Good afternoon. I'm Deputy Chief Darren White here with the Oakland Fire Department's Field Operations Bureau. I believe if everyone heard the question, it was how fast did the Oakland Fire Department get to the incident? We arrived within three minutes, sir. Evan, go ahead, Evan. At this time, all that I know is that we were not able to gain access to the interior of the building. I, at this time, do not know the reason for that, and I am not going to speculate. What I am doing is getting a team of city employees to gather every piece of evidence. This is the weekend. We are in the process of ascertaining that information. Go ahead, Sergio. So, right, come right to the center, sir. Yeah, so, so we're, doing, we're doing the identifications as fast as we can. So th the sooner we can get those identifications done, the sooner we can uh, meet with the families, offer counseling, and, and, and begin to move forward from that. So we want to get everybody identified as quickly as possible. However, it's a very cumbersome process. All those people, I mean, yesterday there was a group of people who were going to uh, an assistance center to do all the Yes, we have uh, we have spent a considerable amount of time at the assistance center. I, I know the mayor has been there very much all throughout the last two days with the families, spending a lot of time with them, as has the sheriff's office, the fire department, and the numerous volunteers. 
most of the families are aware uh, and, and they know that their loved one is likely a victim within the structure. Go ahead, sir. We, we have now started to recover and identify victims who are minors. Um, we do have some, some children in the ages of 17 years old, uh, possibly younger, um, not sure. But uh, we were asked this question yesterday. We had no idea. Uh, we believe that a lot of our victims were in their 20s um, to 30s. And it is uh, uh, very unfortunate that we have to tell you that we have uh, 17 year old victims children, no, no, no small children but teenage children who are still children in our eyes there, there, there are so there are teenagers uh, and and young adults um, and, and people up into the age of 30 plus go ahead Again, I want to confirm that we have activated the criminal investigation team. That means that we are engaging in protocol that allows a criminal investigation to be conducted. I believe it is a bit premature, and I am not authorized to make that announcement. Only the district attorney is allowed to make the announcement with regard to criminal charges and the direction of the criminal in, in any potential criminal investigation. What I can confirm is that the district attorney has activated the criminal investigation team. A representative from the DA's office is here on site, is engaged in our recovery effort to ensure that we are treating this and have the ability to conduct the level of investigation that would be required. Sure. Sarge, before you answer, can you just step up a little bit? Yeah. Some of the folks are having yeah. a hard okay. time here. Um, we do have, have, have victims from, from other countries. Um, we're not releasing those uh, countries yet. We are in the process of contacting those embassies, those consulates. Um, we're working with our State Department to do that. Uh, there's a protocol that needs to be followed in, in regards to notifications to foreign governments, and so we're following that and we're using the assistance of the U.S. State Department. How many other countries are there? Uh, there, There's countries in uh, Europe and, and in Asia. Sir, right back there in the back. I think I just responded to that question. I'm sorry. Again, I just wanted to clarify that I am not authorized to say that a criminal investigation has been launched. Only the district attorney can state that. What I have confirmed is that the criminal investigation team of the district attorney has been activated. A district attorney representative is on site and is working in partnership with other law enforcement agencies. We are ensuring that this investigation and the recovery operation is conducted in a manner that preserves evidence, is conducted in a manner that allows us to get to the bottom of what caused this and leave those types of options open. It is far too early for us to have any suspicions about what caused this fire. And that is something that we will be sharing with you in the coming days. If it is a criminal investigation, that actually will limit our ability to share full information with you. Hold, hold, hold on one second, sir. Excuse me, one second, sir. May we have an opportunity for someone else? to ask a question and then I'll, I'll swing back, okay? Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Look, when we start when we started this investigation, if you would have told us that we would have had 33 victims, um, we, we wouldn't have believed you. Um, I don't know how many more people are left in there. We, we, we have no idea. We have no idea. We have no idea how many people were in that building that night. 
we don't even know how many people got out of that building. So we, I would be speculating. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're expecting the worst and hoping for the best in regards to how many more victims we find. You did say that the relatives, though, at this point, they pretty much know if their family member hasn't responded or not. So how many people are left on that list? There's a lot of people on that list. We, we want to, so I want to make something perfectly clear because we're kind of getting into a little bit of a repetitive cycle and I want to make sure that we accommodate all of your questions uh, as long as they're not in the repetitive mode. We, we, we want to, to really have a broad brush on answering as many questions. There are a lot of things we can't discuss and as we've said from day one, we want to stay away from specific numbers. Uh, that can be um, very dangerous as far as numbers go. So we want to bring you facts, and the facts are uh, 33 victims have been located and have been recovered. 33 families are grieving. 33 families have lost loved ones. We want to be sensitive to that. Go ahead, sir. We're going to have to refer that to the district attorney's office. It's going to be uh, a different conversation than we're going to have right now. Okay, go ahead, Sergio. Well, I, mean, I, I hate to be a little bit repetitive, but I mean, the name that's come up is Verizon, and it's also, I think, the primary tenants of that building. Do you guys at least know where he is, and have you been in contact with them? I. I Criminal investigations are hired by the district, are handled by the district attorney. And the police department. We actually do have our criminal investigation team here on site. That team has also been activated and is present. There are many interviews being conducted right now. But you have to understand that the scope of this tragedy is tremendous. We have many, many witnesses to interview. We are in the process of doing that. We have been able to bring in extra detectives so that we can, again, put as many resources on this, get to the bottom of it as quickly as possible. But we also are trying to stay focused on what our first task is, and that is to attend to the victims and their families. That is our moral obligation to put the bulk of our resources right now on that most important task. If we haven't been able to find him, I'm wondering if you have. Let me answer that one. Yeah. Sergio, I can assure you from the Oakland Police Department, this investigation, as far as what is happening, who is involved, uh, from victims to witnesses, uh, we started that from the moment everyone got the call. So I can assure you we have all the proper documentation and we'll be following up as, as this investigation moves on. Again, I want to bring it back to the 33 victims, to the families, and if we have any other questions, we can move on. Ma'am, I know you have a question right down here. This is for you, Mayor Schaff. Um, I, uh, obviously, this is an incredible tragedy, not just for the families, but for the artist, artist community in Oakland. And I know that there has been um, some about these in between spaces, these sort of liminal marginalized spaces, um, where people have these kinds of thoughts on this, but it's sort of twofold. One, that people are forced into these spaces because of gentrification, because of rising rents and prices like that. And, and two, that I've heard here that there might be an overcorrection, that, that more artists might be displaced. And I just wanted to know what you are going to do to kind of balance those two things, both to keep artists safe, but also to make sure that there are spaces for artists. You know, again, I want to stay focused on what our priorities right, are right now. But you may know that since I became the mayor of Oakland, I have been passionate about preserving and lifting up the incredible creative community that makes this the incredible city that it is. And the issue of creating safe, vibrant spaces for Oakland's artist community is a priority, not just of me as mayor, but of this community. And this is work that has been going on for a long time. And we are gonna say focus on accomplishing that in a way that makes sense, both for Oakland and also uh, for all the different stakeholders involved. Uh, we do have plans. Uh, we ironically scheduled this last week before this tragedy happened 
we are going to be going forward with an announcement on Tuesday around efforts to preserve and protect artist spaces for both living and working here in Oakland. It is an incredible asset and beauty of our city, one that we cherish and one that has been so badly damaged by this tragedy this week. We certainly are. I'm going to uh, keep Sergeant Kelly and ask everyone else to uh, go back to the command post. There's a lot of very busy work that needs to be done. Um, and we will certainly answer your question with Sergeant Kelly, uh, if you just give us a moment. So, uh, before we met with you, I, I went up onto the roof. Uh, I was watching the work as, as it was taking place. It's very different when you see it uh, from above than when you're inside the structure. Um, and so the firemen continue to work their way back into the, the, the tightest little corners um, in each quadrant. And so to watch them work is pretty amazing. They get tired very, very fast. Uh, if you see the firemen and, and the people from the corners bureau, their faces are just covered in soot and debris. And so um, that's what they're doing. They're literally, uh, I, I see all these uh, orange and white buckets in there and they're moving out in an assembly line fashion uh, out to the, to the side where we poke that hole in the building. And so that's what's going on there. How much more area do you have? We, we have another 60 plus percent uh, to search. And uh, we're finding uh, mobile homes or, or rather motor homes or trailers uh, where people may have been living inside those. Those trailers will need to be searched. Uh, we don't even know if there's people inside of those. Uh, so we can't even get to those yet or get inside of those yet. So there's, there's, there were trailers inside there that, that look like they're, uh, they're, they're being lived in, inside the warehouse. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen those um, from the aerial footage. There are two known exits or entrances to this facility. Sergeant, before we answer any more questions, because I want this to be the last thing, yeah. will you just update them again? But we'll uh, be sending the names out or providing yeah. names. Uh, yeah. Can you listen? So we will, we, we need to wrap this up here, but as we move forward here today, we will be providing the names of seven victims to you. Many of these names have uh, been circulating on social media. Um, we will confirm seven names for you. We will be releasing that uh, through the city uh, on uh, on our uh, city website and on social media. That's going to be. A We're working on that now. So when, when Officer Watson and I get back to our office here in the field, we will uh, work on getting that list out to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Next briefing. Next briefing. Yeah, yeah. yeah there'll probably be one more. But what we're going to do is we will send an email out advising of the next media availability. I don't want to set the time right now. Uh, last time we had to push it uh, back an hour and uh, we don't want to keep you waiting. We respect your time. So we will send that out. If we do not have your contact information, please see us and add the contact information. Right here is Erica Derrick. She is the PIO for the mayor. She's sitting right here. Please provide your information to her. We'll make sure you're added on to the list and we'll send it out via email. Thank you very much.